So, do you have to be a rocket scientist or a tech geek to understand an electric car and deal with charging and, and driving and, and paying attention to all the technology or not? Well, that's what we're going to discuss today. Someone had made a comment in the comments section on a previous video, being that this is such a high-tech car, that the car should uh, should do more for you in the respect that it should, uh, we were discussing charging, and, and the car should balance the battery and do all of this stuff for you, and you shouldn't have to worry about how far to charge it based on the temperature outside or how far you want to go, and the car should just do that stuff for you, and that we have to know too much about about the car and, and you know you have to be technically minded in order to have this car. So I wanted to address that. It's actually something that my wife brought up as well. She and I had had a conversation about this. And um, so I am a, a highly technical person. I love to dive deep into things. Uh, I love this energy graph uh, and I, I would love to be able to see a lot more detail than this. I'd love to be able to see individual cell levels and the levels of each brick within within the whole pack and all of that. And um, But most people, they just want to get in the car and go. And my wife said, so you need to know about that the battery should be warm before you charge it and that if you're going to go on vacation, you charge it all the way up. But if you're not, you don't charge it all the way up. And uh, she goes, that's too much to know. Well, I thought about it. And um, here's the thing. you Are there a few things that you need should know or need to know about an electric car? Sure, but there is about any product that you would buy or use. The car does nearly everything for you. I mean, the car does balance the battery for you. Sometimes it's good to charge it way, way up because it forces the, the battery management system to not only balance the individual cells, but each brick of cells together. Uh, so it's, it's decent to do that every now and then, but the car does basically balance it for you thing is the car doesn't know how far you want to drive the next day. It doesn't know uh, do you want to end the day at 10% state of charge or do you want to end the day at 50% state of charge or whatever. So the car just is going to charge to whatever preset charge point that you set in it and you can alter that. Now that's a decision you must make in how you want to treat your car but the same holds true for a gas car. In a gas car you have choices you have different choices but they're still choices nonetheless you have to choose what type of gas you want to buy uh, both of our gasoline cars are turbocharged well I prefer running higher octane or um, uh, e15 in those cars to uh, to bring the octane rating up and uh, the, uh, the the ethanol content and the fuel tends to make the, uh, the the fuel enter the engine at a cooler temperature so I'd rather choose that fuel now, that doesn't mean that if you put cheap fuel in it, it won't run, but it will run better with better fuel. That's something you need to know. Should you fill the car all the way to the very top, or should you fill it halfway? I fill my cars all the way up to prevent condensation from getting into the tank, or from building up in the tank, but you know, you don't have to. If you're broke and you really only have $10 to put in there, you don't have 30 to fill it up, well, put in the 10 that you have, you're not gonna hurt it. You know, there's decisions that you have to make. Um, when do I want to gas up? My wife gasses up. Uh, she will not go down below a quarter of a tank in her car, and then she gasses up. Oh my gosh, I run my cars down till I'm on fumes just about. And I, just because I like to see how many miles I can get out of a tank. No, I've never run out of, out of gas before. I, I'm sharp enough that I know how close I need to be to a station. But uh, there's all these different decisions you have to make. With a gas car, you really need to warm it up. With a turbocharged car, you should also let it idle for a minute or so before you shut it down if you just came from some hard running because the turbocharger is hot and it's a good idea to keep engine oil circulating through the turbocharger and let it cool down. So you should warm a car up. A turbocharged car should be cooled down again uh, at idle. Again, you've got different grade of fuel or uh, E10, E15. Some people like top tier fuel. I mean, there's all these different, different fuel choices uh, you know, you, you've got different things that you're that you're going to uh, have to decide between on a gas car, and it's no different with an electric car. It's just it's a different type of technology. So the items that you must be aware of are different. Also, with a gas car, there is a lot more to bear in mind. 
you've got brakes that wear out. On an electric car, brakes typically don't wear out because of the electric regen slowing the car down. Oil changes. I can't tell you how often I get in my car, look at the little sticker on the windshield and go, oh crap, I'm 100 miles away from getting another oil change. Uh, you know, there's all these different maintenance schedules that are, are present in a gas car that are not present in an EV. So you have to be a rocket scientist or some tech geek to have an EV and to use it properly? Absolutely not. In fact, I would go the reverse and say that there's much, much less that you need to know about an EV than there is about a gas car. The thing is, we've all been raised with normal gasoline-powered automobiles in our lives. We've been taught about them from when we're young, you know, and looking at cars, you know, 15, 16 years old and looking at getting our cars, you know, you have to change the oil every whatever the schedule is, 3,000 miles or whatever on your car. And, you know, you got to make sure the brakes are in good shape and you got to this, you got to that, that it's gotten to be a normal thing for us. Just like a transmission shifting gears, you know, automatic transmission shifting gears and every time it shifts and just something that we are, we are trained, we're taught that that's normal. So in an EV, the same is true. Uh, my daughter, uh, has a, a little smart electric drive. She's had a couple cars before that, but that's the first car she has bought. The couple of cars she had before that were little used cars that we provided for her while she was in college. And the first car she went out and purchased on her own was a smart electric drive. And she's like, this is so much simpler than our other car. Uh, they also have a Saturn that I had given her uh, during college. And that, that Saturn, she goes, wow, that we got into oil changes and all this. She's starting to notice that the EV is simpler to deal with than her gas car, but she wasn't really, you know, she wasn't much of a driver. She only was driving for a few years before she got her electric car. So for her, the electric car was a simple thing to step into. But most of us that have been driving for decades that then get an electric car, we go, wow, this is completely different. This is strange. I, I don't know about this, you know, and it, it's just <clears throat> that which is different tends to scare some people off. Me, I'm drawn to things that are different. So anyway, that's my thought and ramble for the day. I, I plan on doing some other videos comparing the differences between gas and electric cars, but uh, that one particular item about, do you need to know certain specifics about charging the car? And isn't that weird that you have to, that Tesla should expect their owners to know about charging habits and all that? There's very little you need to know, and you can even get by without knowing much of anything and just plug it in and use it. But you can learn a little bit about it and maximize or optimize your electric vehicle experience by knowing just a little bit about charging in the same way that driving a gas car, if you know a little bit about what fuel to use and that, it can maximize the, the performance and economy in that of that particular car. So really no difference there. Anyway, thanks a lot, guys, and as always, go ahead and subscribe, and if you're buying a new Tesla, use my referral code. There'll be a link in the description below. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.